だから外人っていうのはしてたけどしてたのかなそこまで考える必要もなかった Hey everybody, Max here again, and today we have a new guest. And she's not half Japanese, but she has a unique story from being born in Japan. But she's not actually ethnically Japanese at all. Hey guys,、uh, I'm Tiffany Rachel, and I was born in Ibaraki Prefecture. For those who don't know, it's about like two hour drive from Tokyo. And すごい農業的なところなんだけど<笑><笑>そう日本語がまあそう日本語生まれ育ちは茨城,茨城だよねそう6年生までずっといたから日本語も英語もどっちも大丈夫しかも両親もアメリカ人だからまあブラックアメリカ人っていいそうだねまあとりあえず茨城での生活とか Her life from 茨城 to a, you moved to America Charlotte, North Carolina She's also from North Carolina <笑><笑> so, And then she moved back to here、um, and you're a 大学生 right? そうであの I'm learning Japanese again Because when I moved to the States You know I kind of lost my Japanese I guess you know because Especially in North Carolina, there's not many Asian influence, let alone Japanese.、Mm-hmm. And so, you know, you don't really keep up with Japanese. There's nobody who speaks Japanese too. So、mm-hmm. it's like the only person I could talk to Japanese to is my brother. But at the time, we like, got in a lot of fights. And so, oh, <laughs> you know, it's like we didn't really speak、That's、to each、no. other. But brotherly, sisterly. I know, we're, so, we're too close. So we wanted to kind of talk about this bicultural like, nature of your life. But we wanted to kind of share her experiences as a. African American by race, but Japanese by heart. Could you say that? <laughs> like, like, or we'll get deeper into that as we talk. <laughs> Let's start from the beginning. So, you're born in Ibaraki, and I, I do know, and she also brought some pictures. Like, we got from <laughs> this is from your Ibaraki days.、Right? Yes. Yeah, Ibaraki so. Day. How did this come about? Like, your parents、uh, moved to Ibaraki from America? My parents actually first came as missionaries. Okay. And so, what they did was they taught English through the Bible. That was kind of their textbook. But then, my brother and I were born, and then it just went strictly into teaching English. And I guess my childhood was like with my friends, you know, in school, Nihongo de Hanashite, Ryoshin to a Ego de Hanasu, the Naka Ruru, the Yuka. 家の中に入ったら日本語で話しちゃダメっていうルールがちゃんとそうあってルールってなんかあの家の中になんか,かいやいやお父さんから言われてたけ<笑><笑>そ,そうっていうかうちとその兄貴とあの日本語で話してたらなんかお父さんが上からに「スピーキングレス」ってなんか注意されたそう<笑><笑>そう<笑>回そうそうそう2回から注意された時もあったし<笑>えっ、ー、strict だったの何あの厳しかった、yeah. 結構,結構厳しかった。And, but also, because he was an English teacher, there was already that respect. Like for my dad, you know, he was my、mm-hmm. father, but also he was you know, a teacher. You know, so it was kind of like that both. So it was like both like, kind of strict. you know. So Tiffany was, どっちかっていうと家に帰ったらなんかもう日本語で話したかったっていう。Mm, so, so, 日本語の方が自然だったから日本語で話したかったけど。友達もあの一緒にこう家に来た時はどういう。あ、それは日本語だったね、okay. だでももしかしたらその友達が家に一緒に来たらそれが英語を練習できる機会だったから、うんうんうん、もしかしたら両親がそのあそうそう英語で話して友達もそうもう一緒にもしかしたらそう,あそ,うあそうよくは覚えてないけど But most of the time I went to their house I kind of went out でなんでかっていうと When my parents were in Japan you know they taught English So they were and we had like four classrooms around Ibaraki One in Mito Kasama, our house was a kyosu, and. Four classrooms, as in. Like, like there's, there's like a classroom in Mito, and a classroom in Kasama,、uh, a classroom in you know, my house, and then one in Hitachi, kind of like here and there. So the school was. Like, it wasn't.、Uh, yeah. So, how, yeah, how sorry, sorry. Start? So my parents had a contract, well, my dad had a contract like, with the school that I attended,、mm-hmm. but that contract allowed him to do his own thing as well. So、mm-hmm. they had their own business of teaching English. Okay.、And、so they rented some, some rooms.、Uh, oh, I see. My I bad. See. Around the Around the area, the yeah. Area. And so they were always out doing things, basically.、Mm-hmm. And I said to say,、um, I wasn't at home often,、mm-hmm. especially when we were younger, because.、Um, If we were home alone, you know, we probably had to be babysat.、Yeah. So I was babysat by this family, actually. This is the mom. So, and then they were my parents' students. And so. The, these were, this is the mom. This is the mom. You're a babysitter, and this is you. Yeah, that's right, me. That's your, that's is he eating a potato chip? <laughs> How American is this? Classic. <laughs> yeah, so they were, they were kind of like my second family. Yeah. And so, very, very nice family. And, you know, she always fed me. I would sometimes even knock out, she would give us pajamas. 
my mom even said I would come home with different pajamas every time. So it's like they just kind of, so just really provide a family. And so I would go to people's places most of the time. And I think you also said it was a small community in in this area, right? The... Yeah, so I think, I don't know the exact number, but the population, let's just say, let's just give out a number. The population of the area was 2,000 people, let's say. Okay. When we moved, we're a family of four. When we moved, we like broke the zero. It was like 2004. So first of all, we broke the zero. Okay. Two, foreigners broke the zero. So I, I, so I just wonder, like looking back, like how their impression of us were. And this is like back in, I guess, two th year 2000, 1990, late 90s. Well, yeah, I was born in 1998, but we moved so many times. So when okay. we moved to that area, I'm sure it was like 2001, 2002. Yeah. And you said like Cho Inaka no Cho Inaka. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. like I feel like Ibaraki is probably the most you no know, nogyo kind of mm. agricultural site. But where I was was actually like like even more. And it's a place nobody knows. It's called Shirosatomachi in case everybody wants to represent. But <laughs> <laughs> so it was so it was so country that there was no supermarket until I was in fourth grade. Oh, you were telling me. Yeah, and so what we did was we knew the families, which families grew what. So we would go to their house and, you know, buy rice, buy, you know, fruits and veggies. But it was really good, this you know, because like, it's like the rich, it's like, like rich soil. This is like medieval times. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> I will give you one <laughs> piece of rice <laughs> or one piece of... Really? <laughs> like a, a carrot. But it was... I, I didn't notice this a few days ago when I was thinking about it. But that means that they're really... I guess not nice. Well, yeah, like, I guess we just know, all everyone knew is each like other. family, right? Yeah, everybody's like family. And yeah. it's like we we knew each other. There was no such thing as me, you know, running into somebody and introducing myself because mm -hmm. I was known as like either the foreigner family or the English teacher's daughter, you know. Uh -huh. So that was kind of like the English situation. teacher's Tiffany, the English teacher's daughter. Something like that. But she speaks Japanese. Yeah, right? there was no question about me speaking Japanese. Like mm -hmm. they already knew. Well, did you feel like any difference in I mean the treatment obviously they're gonna be like oh it's the foreign family but I'm sure it's more like a nice like I I don't yeah okay. to jump into it like I've never been discriminated mm -hmm. and so it's like although I knew I was different it wasn't you no know, first of all it wasn't important it was like a non-factor even mm -hmm. but yeah they, they didn't really treat me any different I I felt like you mm -hmm. know I was Japanese although I, I knew by looks like, mm -hmm. I know I'm not, but I didn't really, I know what it is. I didn't really feel connected with my parents at the time. Because, oh, okay. you know, my parents, I knew they were from America, this country, uh, this grand country. And so I already knew they had like a certain background. But there was this wall between my parents because um, I didn't know that much English at the time. So a lot of things that was... You, you didn't go back to America either, did you? Like, when you were young, you were just living in Japan. Yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, we visited every once every year, okay. but visiting, you know kind of different it's the opposite of me like I was born and raised in America but sometimes we go to Japan and you know you kind of know but you're not really connected you're not ingrained into yeah it, so it's a little different so there is like a little bit of a wall like yeah and it's like I what I probably what, what was on my mind I couldn't explain it to my parents so it's like there's no point in giving it a shot you mm -hmm. know it's like oh yo this something like this happened in school but I can't really tell my parents because I don't know how to say it in English mm -hmm. <laughs> It's like, I would probably tell my friend's parents, not my parents, you mm -hmm. know? And so, I think that's really interesting. I think after school, I would go to my, my, my friend's parents' house, uh -huh. right? And so, anything that happened, I was like, oh, guess what happened today? You know, I had this, uh, this I would tell my, my, my friend's parents instead of my parents. Yeah. So, everyone's surrounding you. So, そこまで考えて必要もなかったし、まあ、そうね。若い時はあんまり感覚深く考えないから、自分のことはまあ、とりあえず両親が、アメリカ人。アメリカ人。で、自分は自分。そうそうそう。いや。いや、it was and kind of thinking about what to do for high school. And my parents oh. wanted to send my brother and I to an English-speaking high school so we can improve our English. I think they were kind of kudos to that with where to send my brother. 
But I guess, you know, with the earthquake happening, it was like, oh, if we just move to America, obviously they'll go to American, you know, high school. That might be a good idea. So that was, the, so it was that along with other reasons as to why we moved to the mm. States. I, I mean, it, it worked, you know, we speak yeah. good English. Now, yeah. So. What, what was your English level like? back then you think at age 10 I honestly I don't know like you know you don't know what you don't know uh. but I, I do know that maybe if you ask me this question then I'll probably freak out because I feel like even now English is very scripted for me mm. it's like especially when you learn English in Japan for those who you know went to show up in Japan and speak English you know that whatever is spoken to you it's kind of like a code like if somebody asks you hey how are you you respond with I'm fine, thank you. And you, you know, you kinda, it's everything it's, scripted. It's, a, it's nothing. It's, a, it's nothing is natural. And so, if it was anything outside of that script, it's mm. like I, I don't have anything for you, man. <laughs> you know. <laughs> ah, so, so that's how it was for you. Then. That's how it was for me. Okay. Yeah. And I probably knew enough English at the time to you know ask my mom, "Hey, mom, I'm hungry. Hey, dad, is laundry done? Uh, mom, I'm hungry. <laughs> you know, kind of things like that. Same you know, thing. your mom just. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so. It wasn't really like thinking to the next level, uh, so yeah. yeah. Let's jump into your high school, or I guess middle school, right? So, yeah. so you moved straight to Charlotte, North Carolina. Take us to your first feeling of coming into America. Like I said before, you know, I visited the States all the time mm -hmm. and we were in that area, kind of Charlotte, where our family was and everything. So from that impression, I was thinking it was just going to be that, but 24-7, which was you know, you go to IHOP because you know there's no really IHOP experience, <laughs> in, you know, especially yeah. Ibaraki. You go to wet. I went to Wet and Wild all the time. I went to wet and Wild. You went time. to Wet and Wild. Oh yeah, yeah that was, was like the best. yeah. So I which, know what you're which, talking about. <laughs> which is why, like, you know, coming to America, it's like, oh, this is gonna be all fun and games. Oh, it's gonna fun be great. Games. Yeah, you know, it was hard because me being able to communicate with my parents just enough, I thought was enough to. I I thought I knew enough English, but then. Like, let's say somebody asks you, what's up? You can't tell that person to somebody who's learning English. They're literally going to look up. And that was me. That was the level I was at. Really? So, yeah. So, so I didn't know, like, the cultural hey, side. At, at school? Somebody yeah, said, hey, school or my parents' friends or even family members. So you're like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so, especially with my family members, it was hard because although they knew I was raised in Japan, I don't think they actually knew what that meant. Oh, like, you... Yeah. Like they, they're from the south side, you know, North Carolina's Just, pretty Yeah, they south. look at so, you, they're like, Well, they look at me and they English. talk to me and their accents, is, it was hard for me to understand. Because I would say my parents speak not, like, non-accent, so I'm used to their English. Mm -hmm. So if you speak outside of that, I'm not going to know what you're saying. Yeah. You know, to me, it's just not English. But that was probably hard for me to understand the, the slang, the accent, and then the culture. Because some things, there's a lot of phrases, there's a lot of jokes where it's connected to the culture of America. Right. But if you don't understand that, it's like there's a ton, yeah yeah the lunch. amount of fresh prince of bel-air jokes or like other it's tv like jokes you, that go around you just unless you you're there you know yeah. you went to american high, middle school or it was actually a language school so it was a language academy so they had spanish french german japanese and chinese it's which the is, immersion school right it's the immersion school the immersion yes school. and so i went in you know taking the japanese class to kind of like Fukushu, sort of the my Japanese skills didn't really help because the level was too and, low. And by Japanese class, you mean one class that spoke, that taught Japanese, or yeah. was it? Yeah, yeah, one class or, that spoke. Because when I think immersion school, it's like oh, everything yeah. is taught in one so language. So let, let me explain. So they, it was like a K through I forgot twelve. <laughs> K through twelve. Was it until twelve? It probably was twelve. K to throughout twelve program from K to fifth grade mm -hmm. is like. Just in that everything, you learn math, um, science. science, yeah, shakai, all in that language. And then from sixth grade, it's like you have like a regular middle school, you have different classes, but then you also have that one class where it teaches you Japanese, like grammar, maybe Yeah, dokkai. whatever you want, you elect it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went in that, in that program. I think, thankfully, I was there because the Japanese teacher was the only person I could speak Japanese to. Yeah, so I'm yeah. like, dude, help me. <laughs> <I'm struggling."> <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Neil <laughs> Mede. You though, how would you say that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was it was interesting because <laughs> so the earthquake happened in March. I moved to America end of March and I started school April fifteenth. For some reason I remember that date. <laughs> so so then it was Spirit Week. A oh, Spirit Week. <laughs> yeah. The first day was crazy hair day. So I'm over here walking into American school and I'm just like <laughs> like, I'm thinking this is a norm. <laughs> like, I've seen, I've seen teachers with blue spiked hair, 
yellow mohawk. Yeah. I was just like, oh, like how do you learn? Like, you know, like, I was I was terrified. Yes. And it was crazy. It was interesting because we looked through different schools for us to potentially go to. Yeah. I'm like, Mom, that you put this one like, out of all the schools. Wait, so no taki wa mada. So, 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 you said you were in sixth grade, right? Or, and the classes were taught in English though, so how are you, how did you do? <laughs> so in sixth grade, because it was in April, you know in America, uh, school ends in June. Yeah, school is almost ending. Yeah, and so they let, they let me you. pass. <laughs> yeah, they, they let me pass, because um, I know I didn't, if I, even if I tried, I probably would have passed it. But it's from seventh grade. I was struggling in English. Mm. I was struggling in oh English class. Yeah. Yeah, English Everyone's class. I even I. <laughs> I hate spelling and all. It's that, the, the grammar is so different. But also the math. I you know unless it's was it called English? Uh, like you have a sentence, and you have to like yeah, yeah, solve Bunshou, it. I don't know sentence. Yeah, sentence. Uh, problems. problems. Unless it's those, I'm okay. But if it's uh -huh. if it's those, I have to like actually understand the question. It was a problem. Yeah, yeah. But it was it was mostly a problem because in Japan, I felt like like I've I've never been challenged before. You know, I was able to speak English because you know I'm American. I was I never really struggled in school. Any anything I I did, I I didn't do a bad job basically. And so the first time you know I'm in America and it's like I don't understand something. I don't know how to do this. I can't do this right. It it just frustrated me. You know. Mm -hmm. And probably even more so because I wasn't able to express that. And like, to who? You know, I'm not gonna go to my brother, you know? <laughs> I'm not gonna go to my parents, I don't have any friends. And so, um, that was the hard part. But right. it's a crazy experience. Yeah, yeah, it is. So, what, what was it like though? I guess I wanna talk about your culturally and like, you know, you look African American, but your main language is Japanese. So, you're over here. And then, what was it like meeting other Americans that were, I would assume like, Everyone thinks that you're just American, like yeah. everyone else. Yeah, like but I'm when they, or something. Just, yeah, but if they start talking to you, like they have, you know, they want to know, like, hey, what's Japan like? Well, like, also, well, but before we get there, I want to uh -huh. talk about the like when I introduced myself and I talk, they would say, they would call me white, you know, because the way I speak, I, I guess I don't speak black, whatever uh -huh. that means. <laughs> I but do, also I, because we're in sixth grade, you know, but, we're all childish. So uh -huh. I guess those names kind of naturally kind of, you're called that. They're, they called you white because you're... Oh, the way I speak. Uh -huh. But then if they don't ever ever speak to me, they're just going to think I'm a black girl, you know, whatever. Yeah. It's, it's funny because it's more like you're a Japanese Asian. <laughs> I guess that goes into like the identity where it's like all of a sudden I'm being questioned all these things. It's like... Why so is that, it so important? So they they were like, you speak like a white person. Yeah, and, and then, then even and if then, I said, and then you're like, wait, what? Yeah, and even if I would say I'm from Japan, they'd be like, no, you're not. <laughs> it's and like, ah. Like, uh... like, how do you how do you, <laughs> how do you get out of that? Like, I don't know enough English to know how to skirt myself out of that situation. It's uh -huh. like, I'm from Japan, like. Yeah. And it's like, but you don't look Japanese, and it's like, uh, like, I don't know. It's it just kind of frustrating, and uh -huh. I guess it was the first time that. I, I guess not notice, but just kind of realize that people lie so often, I guess, that there's a reason to question, to doubt, oh, no. you know, what I'm saying, because of my looks. Right. That was, I guess, the hard part. I understand, you know, like when I was living in Japan, you know, because of my looks, I look foreigner. That's that's fine. But to say that, to say I'm lying, like about my character, mm. like how is that connected? I guess it was the first time I like, realized I questioned it. And my mom even told me, because I went to summer school for English, because my yeah. English was just that bad. <laughs> and, so, and so I went to summer school and I remember I'm in a classroom full of other foreigners, you know, who are, um, their Four. native languages aren't English, basically. Okay. So there's one person from like, where was she from? Greece or something? One person from Greece, one person from China, one person from Korea and all these um, uh, African countries, I forgot where. Mm -hmm. And when it was my turn to speak, you know, everybody looks like where they come from. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I'm over here like, oh, I'm from Japan. And they're like looking at me. <laughs> it's like, and I'm over here like, if it's an international group, why does it even matter? Like, yeah, do yeah. I have to look like where I'm from? I, I guess, I don't know. Uh -huh. So that was pretty confusing. Um, so I asked my mom, I was like, mom, like, 
why don't people believe me when I say I'm from Japan? Oh. Like, it was just a really heavy thing. I was like, my mom was like, oh my goodness. Like, you know, she doesn't she understand. Like, it's like... She, it was happening, I guess. Yeah. Your mom was probably like, oh. Shit. Yeah. And I even asked them, like, because I moved to America and learning about race and learning about um, these things. I told my, I asked my parents, like, like, yo, why didn't you guys ever explain this to me? Like, as if it wasn't important, you know? And... You know, of course, I'm approaching them upset, you know, like, mm. like, like you're supposed to apologize to me, whatever. But they actually said something really interesting. They said in Japan, there was no reason to explain things like that because it was a non-factor. It didn't matter mm-hmm. that, you know, I was black, so what, you know? So I'm like, hmm, <laughs> that's why you didn't tell me. So now, as an adult looking back, it's like, I understand why you didn't tell me, but there was no warning, there was no training, there was no challenge. Yeah. It's just like, it was hard for me to kind of get over that. Yeah, but they, I guess maybe their reason is they didn't want to impress upon you like hey you're black so you have to do this or do that or be different yeah I just wanted you to grow up and, and just be and you know be. but also I guess even if they did explain it to me uh-huh. I probably would not have understood it <laughs> so it's not like, until you I, got there right it was kind of it was meant to be almost like you have to just yeah see it it's just yourself. like yeah and I remember my parents even telling me saying that before I moved to America I would describe people as their actual color. So I'll probably call you beige mm-hmm. instead of white. You know, yeah. I'll probably call, beige. you know, you know, a black person brown. But then I moved to America and it's like I call people white and black now. And my parents were like, oh, no, <laughs> it's time for them to know, to be taught and everything. So Which is interesting because I guess where you grew up and everything, you didn't see it like, I guess in America, since there's such a huge racial divide sometimes, like, even though it's a melting pot. Like, there's right the now, there's the race relations of... At least in America, they want to some. I don't know how I was, how I want to say it. Whether you believe it or not, like there's certain people that want to really separate, like black and white, Asian, and it seems like Japan. At least in Ibaraki, even though you're different, maybe they were not trying to be like black and Japanese. I don't think they see race as much as. You know, Japanese, you know, the population here, 98% are Japanese mm-hmm. and 2% are foreigners. Right. And most of that 2% are from other Asian countries, which means right. phenotype wise, you don't look too different anyway. So oh. people are exposed to people who look yeah. different. So it's like, phenotype. how do you... Phenotype, that's a, that's a new word I just learned. Can you explain that? It's, it's like your physical looks. So like, you no, know, my color, my, my, the shape of my nose, shape of you know, my ears. Japanese people aren't exposed to it in the first place. Mm-hmm. So even if they do see it, how, how would they know how to categorize it, you know? Mm-hmm. You don't know how to handle it. But also the hard part was like going to America at age 12, going in 13, not knowing those things Mm -hmm. and not having anybody to explain it either, at least at first. And it's like, you know, the first friend that you meet in school, that you make in school, you will want to ask them, like, since, you know, you think you're good friends and it's like, you ask them, "What, what does this mean? But, you know, we're in sixth grade and I guess those who, you know, live in America since birth, it's kind of natural, you naturally know since when you're um, a child, but nobody was there to really like explain it. Like cultural like from, differences? Yeah, the cultural differences and about how, how I guess from starting from slavery time. Because mm-hmm. I did learn about it a little bit in sixth grade in Japan, but I didn't really understand it. Like mm-hmm. I didn't like know like the emotional part and why that was so long ago, why does that matter now? That was my, mm-hmm. my, my big question. But I understand now after living there, but that was a hard part to understand. And even if my parents were to teach it to me from like living like day to day and seeing what's going on around me, that really taught me more so than what my parents explained it to me. You mm-hmm. know, you just kind of see it, you kind of feel it. And so that was yeah. a huge transition as well. Were you trying to become more American when you were, was there something in you that was like, oh, okay, I'm going to try to be like this? I guess it's more like that's how people see me. So I feel, I felt like I had to be that, mm-hmm. which was hard. Because it's like, I have no emotional connection to whatever that is, Mm -hmm. you know, no being black or being a black woman, whatever it is. I didn't, I didn't have any connection to what, how they portray how they are and then me. Mm -hmm. So I felt kind of pushed to be that, Mm -hmm. but at the same time, not really because I was known as the black girl from Japan. So I wasn't really a black girl. Like they didn't really Mm -hmm. see me as a black girl. And so it's like all of a sudden all these things matter, you know, like, why <laughs> yeah, does it Cause matter I can so imagine much? yourself as this girl from Ibaraki, you're like, just, I'm just Tiffany. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, why, yeah, can't, yeah. why can't we just end it there? Yeah. But it, it becomes like a, 
people are like, no, you're you're black, <laughs> like right? I guess is yeah, really. And you're like, why does it matter so much? And, and it didn't matter for so long, twelve years of my life. So that's the norm. Mm -hmm. And now all this is shifting. So, so moving to America was not only learning, I guess, about my parents and how what they're used to, but also I'm becoming a young adult mm -hmm. as well. So it's also that growth along with learning, you know, this new culture, new language. So it's just that all at once. Yeah, which was probably you know was the hardest. Well, I want. I guess I do want to talk about like Japanese American, like the way Japan treats race versus America. Since your parents are African American, I want to talk about maybe anything you've seen that could be considered racist in the U.S. versus in your like your Japanese side and your American side. Like when you view something, I want to know like both sides of like how you see something. So, even for example, are you familiar with? Uh, you know downtown the Japanese yeah, like the, Yoshimoto yeah, yeah. Um, did you see that episode where they're doing like police training camp and then they all like have to wear American police uniforms in the beginning oh, okay I can show you in a little bit oh, okay. I feel like so I guess we could talk about cultural appropriation okay let's say um, a black person no a Japanese person does braids or she has braids right mm -hmm. In America, people will go crazy. Like, girl, what are you doing? Take that out. You know, it's not for your hair, X, Y, Z. And some people probably, I know, don't mind it in America. They're like, hey, you go, girl. <laughs> if my friend saw or heard that, yo, it's like, Tiffany, you better tell your people. <laughs> you <know? laughs> okay, okay. Um, tell your people. <laughs> at that um, time, you're Japanese. <laughs> so I got my hair done at, uh -huh. in Shibuya, actually. I got my braids done by a Japanese person. She's in her 40s who does phenomenal job, you know. Um, she told me her story because she she's fully aware about cultural appropriation as mm -hmm. well. But the thing is, she likes braiding more than she likes talking, she says. Like, that's just, she's always been doing it since she was little. So mm -hmm. I feel like there sometimes needs to be a separation between what, what person likes versus whatever else it is. Because I feel like if she's just doing what she enjoys doing, mm -hmm. she shouldn't be condemned for... Just because of our sensitivity, you know, of, uh -huh. you know, having cultural appropriation. I feel like America has a history of um, especially in the entertainment industry, mm -hmm. and especially with uh, in the '60s when they had the black crow, is that what it's called? Where they had like painted their faces black. Oh, um, yeah. But I, I feel like those are two different things. And plus, Japan isn't so exposed, you know, to foreigners as well. So I feel like sometimes it's just they're admired by it and they try to do it, and they're just unaware of what yeah. Americans, what we, what we go through historically. So I am like mixed feelings about it. I, I'm really, I really am, am like in the middle of it. It's like I understand this side, I understand this side. Uh -huh. Can't really pick and choose. <laughs> you're, you're really in the middle then. I, I really can't. Like it's hard. で、もう深い深い話になっちゃってちょっと変な雰囲気になったみたいで。で、なんか笑って、あ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ
For Japanese people, it's almost like they just probably because Japan is so like you have to be this, you know, that what is it that. Oh, yeah, Derukugi wa utareru. The nail that sticks out gets hammered down. So, like, almost because of that, they wanted, like, just get out. completely get out and then be like, I really like, you know, black culture. Some people were like, this is great. Other people were like, I don't like it. It's so hard. <laughs> like, my mind is like, I think, my, I think I'm fighting inside my brain right now. Like, just, I think in like, my head, I'm arguing. In some sense, you're just like, I wish everyone just got along. <laughs> no, like, and I feel like sometimes. And I feel like some black people are gonna go against me for this, but I feel like um, because of you know, all the things we went through in history and even today, mm-hmm. we are very sensitive with anything. Mm-hmm. Anything that is, makes it seem like you're taking our culture, anything is that like we go off, mm-hmm. you know? And I feel like sometimes it is on us to just be like, okay, if you just like our culture, that's fine. Because, you know, when you're celebrating, let's say, black culture, I feel like it shouldn't just be within the black people. So I understand it's important, but I feel like that can extend to other people who appreciate black culture, black people, you know, whatever um, the categories may be. So I feel like it's it's up to us to make a change as well. Not not just controlling what other people, because you can't control what people do. They're going to do what they want regardless. The same way they can't control what we do, you mm-hmm. know. But yeah, I, I, I do wish we all like kind of got along. Yeah. I, I think I've only explained it to one person uh-huh. about that experience. About um, like my be realizing I'm black, I guess, okay. like to a Japanese person. First of all, it's hard to explain. Two, the conversation really doesn't go anywhere. You know, I like, <laughs> I like having conversations where it bounces off and you're mm-hmm. sharing your opinion, but they have the Japanese person, whoever I'm explaining it to, doesn't even know about it. Mm-hmm. It's like I'm teaching, it's like a lecture, and yeah. it's uncomforting for me, you know, to kind of shut up and nothing is coming back. It's like mm-hmm. silence. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, you need some. But you... <laughs> I sometimes talk to it about um, with halves mm-hmm. half japanese half black people but otherwise mm-hmm. doesn't really come up in conversation real quick i'm trying to look for forgot about that video yeah <laughs> the joke is every year yamada or hamada yeah we, we're gonna go back to that video uh, that I was about. <laughs> so every year hamada wears something different than the rest of the group so it's kind of an inside joke that most of the time they dress them up like a woman this time it was like what's hamada gonna be and then it's like axel foley so that was him. So like everyone else had oh. that look. And then... Because the, everyone is a police officer oh, and the snap. joke was... He's also a police officer. He's the famous Eddie oh, Murphy. That's crazy. And like... Is there humor in that? <laughs> Me being the, um, the Tiffany before moving to America, yes, mm-hmm. there's humor. Now it's like... What are you doing? Uh-huh, <laughs> you know, kind of uh-huh. thing. So, yamete hoshi っていう考えがある。yamete hoshi ってことではないけど、何をやってるかもちゃんと知ってほしいし、その実際に黒人に対してそのどう思われるかも知ってほしい。うん、いや多分知らない。もしもしやもしやるならちゃんと知ってほしい。なんだろう、なんだ、like the history the、yeah. why we would be so mad at you for doing、yeah. that. そそこまで知っててやだってるなら。At least you're expecting the, the attack, you know, so at least you're ready. Yeah, so that's what I should do. Yeah. I think also、uh, what's important, not,、um, what's interesting is that,、um, like, before moving to America, if I were to be called black,、mm-hmm. I would be like, that's true. Like, there's no connotation of like baggage of anything else. But in America, it's like you're called black. Sometimes it's, it means like you're uneducated, you're this, you're this, you're that,、mm-hmm. and that. But that, those are the things that I didn't know prior to moving to America. So now moving back, it's like now I'm sensitive to those things now. So、yeah. it's like everything, it's like I have my, I have my sword up, I got my, got my、uh-huh. shield, like it's like I'm, I'm more sensitive.、Uh-huh. So I, I was truly oblivious to just these things. And so I feel like if somebody were to say, oh, oh he's black, haha, in my Japanese side, I'd be like, yeah, I mean, it's true. Look at me, like, you know,、uh-huh. what else am I? But in America, it's like it's, it's just a whole nother, the same way, you know, if you were to call, be called white.、Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. I'd be like, it's not untrue. y e a h So, yeah, so I think there's also that difference. So, the way I perceive things now is, is different as well. Yeah. You have two sides in you almost. You have、yeah. two personalities, almost two, two different people, and you're trying to find like, the, the middle ground of like, where you really stand and fall. I think that's probably, well, for me at least, it's a challenge because, because I have these two opposite experiences, it's hard to make. 
one statement. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like, yes, I have an opinion, but because I can see both sides, I'm torn yeah. inside of me. And when I was taking a, a ESL, English Second Language mm -hmm. um, ac academic writing course, I couldn't make one statement because if you would ask me a question, I have two answers. <laughs> like have, you always, so it's hard making just one thesis statement. It's uh -huh. like, well, this side, I, I would think this, but if it's this not side, we can make excuses. Naturally. Yeah. So right now, I guess, you know, being a uh, college student, a university student, and yeah. learning more things, I think I'm still trying to bunch everything I experienced into this, yeah. you know? So it's still a process, but I do like that I have, and English and Japanese, you know, culturally, language wise, everything is opposite. And I think I shared this um, with you before. But speaking in English and speaking in Japanese, I'm two different people. Yeah. And I feel like in America, that would be called two-faced and you're fake, you know, uh, fake and phony or whatever. But I, the things you say in English just doesn't cross easily in Japan. Yeah, Japanese, I mean, I've been told, versa. like, my Japanese sounds a lot nicer. Like, and when I speak English, like, they, they said, like, hibiku? Oh, really? Hibiku. Oh, that's Demo, interesting. Yeah. Nihongo de shaberu to ko ko yasashiku. That's interesting. I, I guess mean, like when I was in America, like, um, you know, I'm learning new things. I think I mimic what people say. Mm -hmm. Like, I would hear what they say and I would understand the message that is conveying. Mm -hmm. So I would kind of take notes into my head and so I would keep saying that. But in Japanese, it's, it's more natural. For like, what I, for like in English, there's a lot of phrases, there's a lot of jokes, there's a lot of uh -huh. things, right? Which Japanese doesn't have. Yeah. And I feel like in English, things come off more casual, more straightforward sometimes. Versus Japanese, it's more high cultural, so it's like things are more broad, and you know, you could just say kedo, like toilet to kaiten desu kedo, without finishing yeah, the sentence. Oh, yeah, yeah, so, so, so. Desu kedo. Yeah, if you say, I use the bathroom, but. You're gonna <laughs> but finish what? the sentence, you know, kind of thing. Like, so. No, you can say one word, and people are like, ah, oh, what's up? <laughs> it's like, true, I know. I did want to bring it back to the point that you, know, you went from Japan to America, back to Japan, and dochikatte yu to nihon no ho ga. ここ口がいい。絶対ここ口がいい。そう。日本の文化それとも日本の人の文化と。そう、日本人も優しいし、文化も好きだし、食べ物も美味しいし。まあ、食べ物はね、そう、食べ物がもう本当に好きそうだな
ありがとう。ありがとう。お疲れ様です。